Hi, this is Belinda. Just sharing more of my experiences with the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I get asked quite a bit about what my most memorable experience was. And immediately what comes to my mind is the dedication of the Nauvoo Temple. That happened back in June of 2002. So I was quite a new member at the time. And uh, President Hinckley requested that the choir uh, provide some music at the dedication sessions. And he asked that uh, the choir send a small group of about 50 members to do that. Well, Craig Jessup had another idea and he suggested to President Hinckley that we actually bring the whole choir and let each um, session have a group of 40 or 50 members and just rotate those groups. And um, this was an amazing blessing because sure enough, President Hinckley agreed to it so that none of us were left out. And I was a new member at the time and, and um, usually seniority would determine who gets to go on a trip. So if he hadn't have petitioned President Hinckley that we all go, I would have missed out. So I'm so thankful that he did that. So we flew out in, uh, I think, two or three airplanes out to Illinois, stayed in a nearby city. We, we took about 10 buses into the small, beautiful town of Nauvoo, right there on the Mississippi River. Uh, we got to spend a few days there. And I think I was only assigned to do one session since I was a newer member. Some others got to do two or three sessions, but uh, that was really all I needed for the amazing experience that took place. But going backwards a little bit, when we found out we were going to do this um, trip and be able to sing at the dedication, I decided I need to look into my ancestor stories and I need to just do some discovery and see who, which of them may have been at Nauvoo. Cause I really wasn't certain. Um, I knew I had some ancestors that were in the handcart companies and came across the plains, but I didn't know much about uh, their history in Nauvoo. Well, I just found a treasure of stories. One ancestor, Robert Telford, worked on the temple. He was working on one of the walls and actually fell and injured himself and was lame from that injury the rest of his life. Another ancestor, Albert Rockwood, was the overseer at the stone quarry where they were able to uh, get the stones to build the temple. Really dangerous place, apparently. Um, Edmund Ellsworth lived there in Nauvoo, knew the prophet Joseph Smith, uh, had a home there. And, and there were others as well. And I was just thrilled to find these stories. And I really studied them and put my heart into, into their stories. So, um, as I said, we flew into, into Illinois, bust into the town and had the opportunity then on my assignment day to do a session. There must have been 12 or 16 sessions of, of the dedications. And it was just glorious to be in that assembly room inside the temple uh, at the feet of Gordon B. Hinckley and his counselors and so many apostles and then to have that glorious opportunity to raise my voice um, in the spirit of God, like a fire is burning and the Hosanna anthem. And it was there that the spirit taught me that my ancestors were also in attendance and they were rejoicing in the rebuilding of this temple. But not only were they in, in attendance, 
but I got the overwhelming feeling that they knew me and that they knew I was their descendant. And it was my privilege to actually be there to honor them and to honor their sacrifices and their faith. And that was just an overwhelming feeling uh, that was so amazing. That uh, dedication session also was life-changing because even as President Hinckley said, and I knew in my heart, our Heavenly Father was in attendance there as well as the Lord Jesus Christ. And to me, that was a sign of their acceptance of the great sacrifices of these early saints and the rejoicing in the rebuilding of this temple for them, for all of us. So when I came out of that session, I was kind of dumbstruck. I could not speak. I was in so much awe and had witnessed such glory that it took me several hours to, to come out of that. We were able to do some touring in Nauvoo and walk some of the streets. And I'll never forget my walk down Parley Street, which was a main thoroughfare that the saints used when they were driven out of Nauvoo because it led right to the Mississippi River where they had to try to cross over on the ice since it was in the winter that the mobs were forcing them from their homes and from the warmth and from the, all, of, all that they knew. But as I walked down Parley Street and I looked at my shoes and the dust that was forming on my shoes, I thought to myself, I never want to wash this dust off. I, I always want to remember the sacrifice that went on here by my own ancestors and stay true to their faith and to their sacrifices that I'm benefiting from today. The Spirit also taught me a wonderful truth, and that was that some of the handcart pioneers have written their testimonials about when they felt so exhausted that they couldn't take another step, suddenly something pushed from behind on their handcart and they just would move forward. And it was as, as if angels were, were pushing, pushing them along when they had no strength left. Well, the spirit taught me that sure enough, we were those angels. We in these, in these um, last times, were those angels that pushed them along because everything they were doing was completely for our benefit. And we are enjoying now those amazing blessings of Zion, their dream of Zion. We are living it now. So we owe them everything. One final experience there in Nauvoo was an opportunity to uh, sing right outside the temple. Here's a picture. You can see that. We gathered as the choir right outside the temple on the hill there overlooking the, um, the city and the river. And we sang some glorious music. Um, I think we sang, Come, Come Ye Saints, of course, and Saints Bound for Glory, Redeemer of Israel. And I think this, this can be found on uh, YouTube as well. But it was as if we had an audience in the skies of all the former saints, the early saints. I truly felt their spirit so much. And I felt the spirit of Joseph Smith, larger than life. So grateful for that man, for that amazing prophet. And I have a testimony that he was called of God and that he did restore the true church of Jesus Christ. And then one of our final activities there was to go to the town of Quincy, which wasn't far, and actually give a benefit concert 
for the town and raise money for the town. This community was really instrumental in aiding the saints as they were driven out of Nauvoo. The, the home and the town they built from nothing, from a swamp, and the beautiful temple that they had just built and now driven out by evil men and murderers. But the people of Quincy were kind enough to take the saints in and give them some warmth and give them some food. And this concert was a, a thank you to them. And we were able to raise quite a bit of money in, in this benefit concert. And boy, was there a wonderful feeling of goodwill and brotherhood there. I am so thankful for the joys of the restored gospel, for the early saints. I'm so thankful for the Nauvoo Temple. Uh, we actually were able to go back again and take our family and show them the temple. And we were able to attend a session. And that was the, in the times when they would choose a witness couple. And it just brought joy to my heart to be a witness couple there at the Nauvoo Temple for a session. I love the gospel. and I love the Lord's kingdom. It is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And so blessed to be founded on the foundation of prophets and apostles. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.